Whether due to fire, hurricane, or an act of terrorism, everyone needs to prepare for disasters and other emergencies. For the millions of Americans with disabilities, disaster planning is essential. Hello, I'm Tanya, and we'll be discussing the importance and the specifics of emergency planning for people with disabilities. People with disabilities and other individuals with specific functional or medical support needs have to prepare just like everyone else, but may need to take a few extra steps to ensure their comfort and safety. If an evacuation is ordered, knowing what to do ahead of time makes it easier to leave early and safely. To be ready for emergencies, individuals and families need disaster preparedness plans. For people with disabilities, this plan should include emergency contact numbers as well as complete medical information. You should complete a personal care assessment as part of your disaster plan. This plan lists the tasks you would be able to do yourself and what assistance you would need at all stages of a disaster, before, during, and after. It's also a good idea to form a personal support network, sometimes called a self-help team. A self-help team provides assistance as needed in preparing for emergencies, as well as during and after a disaster. Neighbors are often the fastest help in an emergency, so consider having them on your support team. Consider having a support team at work, school, home, and wherever you spend time. Having several people in your network for each location would be a great idea. Just imagine a disaster situation that causes electricity to go out and roads to close. Could you be on your own for some time if emergency responders couldn't get to you or a loved one right away? What if your support network couldn't reach you? Do you have an extra supply of medications, oxygen, water, and food? Would you need assistance or transportation to evacuate? Would you need assistance with grooming and preparing food? How will you communicate and learn about new information from authorities? The answers to these questions and others need to be a part of your personal care assessment in your disaster plan. Bring together your personal support network and give them a copy of your plan. You should review the plan together. Make sure you give or write good instructions to let others know exactly how to help you, like with any equipment or medical needs. Consider all your details and decisions and practice the plan to make sure it works. During an emergency situation, you should immediately contact your support network and make the decision early whether you will leave or stay. Always leave if an evacuation is ordered and leave early. I should be ready in about five, uh, five or ten minutes. Thanks a lot. People with disabilities sometimes have additional needs or special things, devices, assistive equipment, and food items or different dietary requirements that they may need to have access to. And they need to prepare for that in advance. So they need to do their personal care assessment and have their plan in writing. Emergency planning, just like Ryan Walsh has done, helps to ensure your safety, comfort, and independence. Ryan has muscular dystrophy and has taken the steps to be prepared. You'll note that he did this with the help of his mom, who is a key member of his personal support network. The first thing that Ryan and I did to prepare for any type of emergency or attack would be to start talking about it. I'm really glad that we have all of this listed now and already packed and ready to go. The things that we absolutely have to have to help Ryan sustain life would be an Ambu bag which would attach to his trach in case his vent wouldn't work or we didn't have his vent. Three really important things that I really need to have are um, a new trach, definitely, um, a seven day worth of meds that I take, and my suction. So they need to try to think if something really bad happened what would they be able to do for themselves with their abilities and the limitations, but be realistic with that. Do they need a personal care assistant for the day-to-day -day living things, for bathing and eating and changing clothes? Do they need additional battery backup? Do you have a service animal that you use? Does that animal have the food and water that it may also need? Do they use evacuation devices, stair chairs, for instance? Part of disaster planning is to organize a network of people who you can rely on when disaster strikes. Your personal support network should include the people closest to you, people who you select and that you trust. They could include relatives, coworkers, classmates, roommates, neighbors, or people who visit your home and are part of your usual routine and life. You don't have a personal preparedness plan without a support network. 
Being blind, I know that I could be particularly vulnerable in an emergency. The most important person on my support team is uh, my wife. My wife and I, we're always concerned to make sure that we've got an evacuation route, that we've got supplies. Anyone can be on your personal support network. It could be your friends, your family, your neighbors, your doctors. Your personal support network can be your coworkers. It could be your boss. Having a support team makes you more secure in yourself. I have a support team at home, but it's critical that we have one at work. The people on Ryan's support team are my mom, which is his grandmother, mm -hmm. um, Lydia, which is his nurse, mm -hmm. um, my next door neighbor, Avril, and my two best friends. Ryan's going away to college, which is three hours away, and it's really important that he has an emergency plan for evacuation and a support team while he's there. And the um, local fire department, the police department, um, are the first people that we're going to contact. And you also need to be working with the local fire department and re first responders. You can't leave them out of this process if they're the ones that are going to be responding to your buildings to help you. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. And they need to be asking their management team, wherever they work, what are the plans in place for people with disabilities in this building? What do I need to know? What are your expectations of me? And here's my expectations of you. And to not be passive about that. In the workplace, it's very important to work closely with your building facilities management folks so they know what your needs are, what assistance you may need during an emergency. It's very important to have a written plan, but what's more important is to practice, practice, practice. Make sure that those procedures are second nature. By practicing using the chair, fear doesn't even exist because you know you have a plan. You gotta have a plan. Everyone has to have a plan. And you will also need to have a disaster supplies kit, both at home and at work. The supplies kit should be filled with water, food, a flashlight, batteries, radio, a first aid kit, important phone numbers and documents, and any special items related to your personal needs. Remember to include food and water for service animals. You'll also need to work out evacuation steps, and that includes getting out of your building, leaving your neighborhood, and leaving the affected area. Since debris may be in the way, you'll need to have more than one route, so be sure to listen for information from local officials and plan ahead. Knowing what to do in an emergency, particularly if you have a disability, I think makes it a lot easier for you to be able to go out in the world with some confidence. With Ryan going off to college, of course I'm gonna worry, um, like any mother would. But with all of the emergency procedures in planned and being drilled, it'll definitely give me peace of mind. And I'll be okay. You'll be okay, I know you'll be okay. I'm still gonna worry. I know. I know. The people you've just met have taken the time and the few simple steps to prepare. If you have a unique situation, or if you're a caregiver, a friend or family member of a person who requires additional support, take the time to prepare. We all owe it to ourselves to take these planning steps to heart so we all can be ready when disaster strikes. Get a kit, be informed, and make a plan.